Ellen. I was going to call and ask you about 5G research. So you can On your cell phone, were you? No. On my cell phone. <laughs> Ellen Tchaikovsky, Office of Legislative Counsel. I am here on 5G preemption and issues related to that. So the, I'm going to give you some of the legal um, framework related to the federal Telecommunications Act. So the Telecommunications Act of 1996 established the Federal Communications Commission, the FCC, as the body that has authority over wireless communications. The act clearly states that the FCC has the authority to regulate wireless communications, but it struck a compromise. So it left state and local governments authority over siting of wireless telecommunications facilities. So I'm not starting, I'm not really talking about 5G here. I'm talking about all wireless. And that technology does fall under that category. So uh, the state and local governments retain authority over the siting. However, this authority has is subject to five limitations in the act. And this is sort of where the preemption comes in. Um, the federal government recognized that the state and local governments are in, a, are in a position to have some say over the physical location because you know all areas are different. But there are some sideboards on it. So there are five limitations to the ability to regulate the siting. First, you can't flat out. Um, prohibit wireless service, and you also can't have the effect of prohibiting wireless service. And there's a lot of case law around what that means. Next, a sta state and local governments must act on an application for the siting of wireless uh, telecommunications facilities within a reasonable time. And um, since 1996, there have been a number of documents and, and um, pieces of guidance issued by the FCC um, stating what is a reasonable amount of time in which an, an application has to have a decision. Three, denials of permit applications must be in writing and they have to be justified with evidence, they have to be supported by evidence. I'm going to skip four for a second. But five is that an aggrieved person, either that has been denied a permit or that feels that uh, they have been prohibited entirely, can bring a suit against the state or local government. But number four says that state and local governments cannot regulate wireless telecommunications facilities on the basis of radio frequency emissions. So. State and local governments can regulate the physical location of telecommunications facilities. Um, but the FCC has set radio frequency emission limits. They have um, explicitly kept that from the state and local governments and have set their own limits. So those limits are established, and every telecommunication facility has to abide by those limits. Um, in December, the FCC voted unanimously to uphold the existing radio frequency emission limits. So they did revisit it recently. Um, and yeah. So I was also asked what other states are doing um, around 5G. So I can tell you that 21 states have passed laws to streamline and facilitate the expeditious deployment of 5G. Um, no states have um, passed laws regulating um, 5G based on radio frequency emissions because the preemption is clear. The state of New Hampshire in June did pass a law establishing a study committee. Um, it set up a study committee to look at the potential health effects of 5G. Their report is due in November. The state of Connecticut also set up a, um, a, a, study, a study group to look at um, 
issues around 5G. It, the state of Massachusetts did have a bill introduced last year um, that called for the ban of dangerous wireless facilities. That bill had one hearing and hasn't, ha and hasn't moved since. Uh, but there are a number of municipalities that have t enacted ordinances attempting to limit the deployment of 5G. So most of them are in California. Uh, and there, uh, there are a number of them, primarily in Marin County, which is just outside of San Francisco. Um, but San Francisco has a long-standing ordinance related to aesthetics and uh, development and design that the California Supreme Court recently upheld uh, as, a way, as a type of ordinance that could be used um, that was not inherently violating um, the, the sort of uh, regulation of 5G. So, so there are some ordinances in California that have been enacted that are related to uh, aesthetics and design and physical location of wireless facilities. Okay. Um, I assume since it's San Francisco, that's an urban setting. Yes, and their design, their design uh, requirements are very detailed and they've been in existence um, for a long time. So one of the other things is that there are a number, a, a number of these California ordinances that are related to 5G and small cell deployment do mention uh, the radio frequency emissions. However, there is a difference between the precedent in California for this and in Vermont. So there is a Second Circuit case, um, which Vermont is in the Second Circuit, that held, um, there, there is some case law out there that said, if uh, a municipality or a local government wishes to, attempts to regulate the, the placement of these facilities and lists the emissions, the radio frequency emissions, as one of the reasons they're attempting to regulate as long as there is another justification related to aesthetics or physical location, that's okay. However, the Second Circuit found that having the RF emissions be any part of the consideration is a violation of the Telecommunications Act. So Ver Vermont is preempted from regulating based on the frequency and frequency. We can't ban it. Um, we can't make it so difficult that it is an effective ban. We can't just delay permits forever. All right. Okay. And California has sounds like some more urban aesthetic ordinances, which we probably couldn't transfer here. We um, could do our own that says you've got to screen it. Um, so, a so the ordinances do make use of um, spacing requirements and physical appearance and um, aesthetics. If you are concerned about aesthetics of small cells, we in Vermont have um, state land use laws that regulate um, aesthetics. Mm -hmm. Acts 250 and 248A have to do with the physical location of um, facilities. So and they all involve public input. Right. But having the conversation about radio frequency emissions makes it a no no. Yes. Oh, okay. Starting to sound like Vermont Yankee and safety. I think what you're also saying, though, is that enacting restrictions that are ostensibly based on aesthetics as a fig leaf to deal with radio emissions would be struck down. Is that a fair statement? There would be a strong case. Um, but there is also a strong case that there can be aesthetic concerns when you are. Um, installing 
telecommunications facilities. Okay. But if if you are yeah. yes, <laughs> fig leaves are probably at risk of being challenged. Okay. But I assume we could say you need to screen the pole. I assume there'd have to be neighbors that would see it. Screening it from the deer probably wouldn't pass muster. So it would work better probably in a more rural, a more urban setting where the poles, they're there. I mean, the, the, they're in neighborhoods, they're, there's just nowhere else to put them. Whereas we have an awful lot of rural facilities, which is why I think they've told us because of the shorter span that 5G covers, it's not likely to come to rural Vermont soon. But soon can be a relative term. Alan, can you talk a little bit more? I don't know if you have the language in front of you of what uh, the study committee for New Hampshire entailed. What, what was the charge? Sure. The they do specifically list uh, looking at the potential health impacts. Okay. This is uh, so establishing a study committee to study the environmental and health impacts of evolving 5G technology. Um, let's see. Well, we asked for the Department of Health to look at it. Right, right. right. We've got that. Who sits on that study committee? Two members of the Senate, a member of the public, the Attorney General, two members of the New Hampshire Technology Council, uh, a member of the Business and Industry Association, a member of the New Hampshire Medical Society, a member of the, un the University System of New Hampshire, a member, and I'm I'm paraphrasing. This is yes. Um, a member of the cell phone and wireless technology industry, the commissioner of Department of Health and Human Services, and one member of the public with expertise in biological effects of radio frequency emission. What does that do? Uh, November. It's November. Okay, so next, yeah, I'm sure we can borrow. Okay. It will be posted and will be interesting to see what they have. It does not seem to have a lot of medical personnel on it. Okay. So one question on screening. Yeah. So if we, leg if we legitimately felt the need to screen these things for aesthetic purposes, is there a case law or something that sort of Attacks the legitimacy of that concern if we hadn't done it for a similar other device? Can you repeat the question? I guess I'm just asking. <clears throat> assuming some of us had a legitimate aesthetic concern about who sells, and there's <coughs> one way to approach it would be a screen to mandate screening, not to ban them, but to say who wants to screen them. I'm just wondering if we hadn't done that previously for other kinds of cells, would that be an issue? Um, that is an interesting question. So we do currently regulate the aesthetics of wireless facilities under 248. Not all, because there is a, a jurisdictional threshold of size. Um, I don't know if I have an answer, because I, I have not delved deep into the case law, but we do have an existing permitting program that relates to aesthetics. And um, it would have to be, um, it couldn't be um, focused on a particular provider. Um, and so if you were interested in that, you'd have to be very careful to make sure it was um, not having disproportionate impacts on a particular provider. There's a lot, there's case law on that. Um, I, I don't have a complete answer for you. 
I assume a lead screen would be that would block waves, but not pass muster. What we was that? A, a lead screen would not pass muster. Oh. We have to do trees or lead, or, or lead, yeah, <laughs> lead fig leaf or a whole bunch of them attached together. That it would have to be the same scope type of screening that we've done with everything else, which is generally plantings, bushes, fake tree things that look like fake trees on the top of mountains. Um, um, so the limits on emissions established by the FCC haven't changed. So they have to comply with the limits that have been in place for almost 20 years. Um, so I cannot give you scientific or technological explanations about the emissions, um, but there are existing limits and there are differences in, in this 5G that are I cannot articulate, but no, we did have the health department in, and they did do an update of the literature. And I think they said at this point, the biggest concern was for installers that got close and could get some skin burnt. That 5G does not penetrate your skin, which four and three and other Gs do. But they didn't see any major concern at this point, but it's new technology, and I think that's what makes people uneasy. We don't know. I think it will be interesting to see what New Hampshire, you said Massachusetts was studying? No. 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 Connecticut. 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 Does have so it'll be there. interesting to see what they come up with and if they, you know, open up a new road for inquiry. You know, a couple weeks ago, you and I talked about the D.C. circuit, and I don't know you have time now. I don't know how much time we have. We have no idea how much time we have, but I think we're over time at okay. this point. Can you just give a brief summary of the DC Circuit rulings? So I know my folks back home are watching this closely. Sure. So, <clears throat> last, so the FCC in general has um, really been focusing on. Uh, speeding the deployment of the new technology. So last year, they issued two orders clarifying language under the Telecommunications Act um, in order to, that did sort of diminish the, the state and local role a bit more. So they clarify, in one of the orders, um, n so in one of the orders, they, they defined reasonable time in which to respond. Um, so it's either 60 or 90 days, depending on the application. Mm -hmm. So they set a clear time limit um, on when a, a local government has to respond to the permit applications. <clears throat> the other um, order uh, attempted to uh, exempt all small cell uh, from going through both NEPA, the National Environmental Policy Act review, and National Historic Preservation Act review. Um, as well as limiting, as well as changing the way that um, tribes um, participate in the input. Uh, so there are different fees that the tribes charge for when they consult on these applications. Mm -hmm. And so there were, there, both of those orders are currently being litigated, although the DC Circuit Court did release a decision on the, the second order I talked about so the DC Circuit Court found that the, the FCC couldn't have a blanket exemption for small cells to go through the NEPA environmental analysis or the National Historic Preservation Act analysis. So uh, <coughs> small cell uh, facilities that qualify, that trigger either of those act, do still have to go through them, although at this point, many of them aren't triggering NEPA because they're part of co-location already. So that doesn't often trigger NEPA review as it is. Um, but both of those orders were an attempt to sort of clarify that um, state and local governments can't um, slow down. They have to be sort of um, keep keeping this process moving. So the FCC is focused on fast deployment. There is another issue related to the amount of, they also capped the amount of fees that state and local governments can charge. Thank you.
Oh, they figured out when you do that, too, huh? Okay. All right. That, did, I, did, I get the, did I get all the points? I think so. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. I think there's just some specificity to things we've been being told for several years that we can't regulate. And this, there might be a crack in here somewhere, but it, it, we'd have to look pretty hard to find it. <coughs> all right. 